Hello and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 on Elm Creek. So this is going to be another information video, another how-to slash tutorial video, uh, but this time I'm answering a big question and it's taken me a few hours to find out these, uh, the information that I'm going to be sharing in this video, which is what is the most profitable crop? So out of the 14 crops available, I've been really busy at work trying to find out that answer for you. Um, so I've put all the crops on the ground here. We've got wheat. Uh, I think we've got some barley, uh, we've got some oats, got some canola, some sorghum, some berries, and we've got some uh, sugar cane over here, um, cotton, sugar beets, potatoes, corn, uh, soybeans, I forgot what that one was, and then we've got finally some uh, sunflower seeds. So out of all these crop types, all the ones you can grow, I've got to just show you the menu here. You can see that the top ones, the wheat, the barley, oats, all these uh, sugarcane, everything like that. Um, I'm going to answer the question of, of what is the most profitable? What will give you the biggest yield and what will then turn out the most money? So like I said, it has taken me quite a while to find this information, but I am happy with how it's turned out. But first things first, let me just talk to you about what I did and how I went about getting this uh, information and finding out what the best crop type is and the most profitable. So if you've watched part one and part two on my videos on how to maximize crop yield, you've noticed that I've been using field 44 on Elm Creek. Now it is a small field, but it is good because it's always gonna be the same size um, and it's just good for testing out. So I have used field 44 again for this. So what I did was the exact same thing that I did in part two of how to maximize the crop yield as I was preparing the field for each one of these crops. So what I did first off uh, to make like a, a save point was I mulched this field up, I plowed it, I spread some lime, I rolled it to get rid of the stones, uh, the small stones, and then at that point I saved. So from that was where I was gonna start planting in my crops. And then one by one, I planted in my crops, made sure that it was fully fertilized and then harvested the crop and each time took a note of the yield that I was getting um, and if there's any straw as well, I was adding that onto it. Um, just to give me a reference point. Now, the only thing I will say, it was pretty difficult with the olives and the grapes. Now I did try and just make the vineyards as close together as I could in this space. So in this in this like rectangle shape, this is where I put them in. So again, that might not be 100% accurate, but it's very close. So you could probably test this out at home and you might get close to me. You might get a little bit different, but you'll probably get close to me uh, because as long as you're sticking in, in the, the rectangle, then you, you know it's pretty much just always a set amount. Uh, so I have to just point that out first. So another thing I want to just quickly point out as well, just to keep in mind, is the prices. So this this show price fluctuation, that this graph that it shows you, this is completely rubbish. I'm just going to say that now. Every single price that I made a note of, it doesn't reflect this in any way at all of every single crop what i found was most of the time the price the prices fluctuate from high to low each month so it went high then high then low sometimes it varied but it was pretty much always around uh, the same price i did get maximums and obviously got the lowest as well throughout the 12 months uh, but this this fluctuation chart here really really doesn't really make any sense right now because the prices i got was just completely different to what this graph should show. This graph shown here for me with canola that it's going to peak in December and then it's going to get to the lowest point in, in July. That, But that never happened for me. It really didn't. Uh, some of the prices might show that in July, I mean, I can look right now uh, for canola, if I look quickly. Actually, my lowest price was in July, but my highest price was in June. So I got the highest amount on offer for canola in June. So again, just keep this in mind. This right now, um, I wouldn't be using it. I really wouldn't. Um, and also keep in mind that on Elm Creek, if I'll just quickly show you the prices, Goldcrest Valley is an insane amount, but I have, I have taken it into consideration because it's gonna be scaled for every single one. So on, Bar on Bali, most of the time, my highest price was Goldcrest Valley, same for olives and so on. Uh, and the reason for that is it is a train line. So you have to hire the train out, it will go off map to, to Goldcrest Valley. It's actually pretty easy to do. So if you do want it to use it to, to maximize, you can do. So just keep that in mind as well with the prices. 
So all the data that I collected, I put into an Excel spreadsheet and I put it in four separate parts and I screenshotted each one. Them screenshots will be coming up on this video. So if you do want to take, you know, take a good look at them and have your own copy, you can also screenshot from this video, but I will be adding these screenshots in my Discord server. So if you do want to take a look at them uh, from this video, they will be there. Um, so let's start off with the first one. So the first thing I did, and you'll probably see it up on the screen right now, is I tracked all the prices for every single one of the 14 crops for our 12 month period. So these prices were taken on Elm Creek. They were taken at 9am every day, which is a month each day. Um, and the prices were on medium difficulty. So I have set them in a color coded way. So if you go from left to right, uh, start off with January and wheat, for example, it's a 716 pound. So that's the price of wheat in January that I got. That was the best price in January from all the sell points on Elm Creek. Um, and then as it goes to February, you can see that it rises, so that goes to green. Uh, but then it drops back down again in March, which is red. So the green's telling you that it's risen in price from the previous month. And then again, the red's telling you that it's lowered in price from the previous month. So the orangey yellow, that's the highest price I witnessed throughout the 12 month period. Uh, it shows you what month that is as well. So for example, wheat, the highest price I saw was in April at 945 pound on medium difficulty. And the lowest is in the blue. So that 599 in November was the lowest price I witnessed for wheat. So I've tracked that all there. Now again, these prices do fluctuate. You'll see something different, but what I can say with confidence is this is a good trend. So even though there might be small differences, you might get an odd crazy price every now and again. This is the normal average price if you look at it uh, f f that everyone will be receiving. That can be different on modded maps, obviously modded, mod, modded maps that have come out after this video. They might tweak the prices uh, just to suit that map. You might get it. You might see a better price with soybeans, for example, or something else. Uh, so just keep that in mind. This is on Elm Creek. Uh, this is a, the base kind of prices within Farming Simulator 22. Um, and it's just good to see this because then I can work out from, from these prices, from the best. If I sold the, the yield that I get from each crop at the best price, at the best time, that'll then determine the profit that I get. That's the way I've worked it out. So that's one of the screenshots that I've got up for you. Like I said, it'll be in, in my Discord. Um, also, I'll leave it up so you can obviously uh, screenshot it at any moment you want. Right, so what I'll do now is I'm going to show you the footage from each crop type that I harvested. Um, I did record as I was harvesting and also at the end just tipping out so you could see the actual amount and the as it was flowing out of the pipe or flowing out of the trailer, whatever it was in the end that I did, uh, you'll be able to see it. And I'll talk through one by one each crop type, the yield that I got. So in field 44, the first crop that I tried was wheat. I got 3,029 litres, which is not too bad. And I also got 12,497 litres of straw. Now I've added straw into each one of barley and oats because at the end of the day it is a byproduct from the crop that we're growing and you can also sell that. Now I did work out that uh, 1,000 litres of uh, straw averages are around £75 for the 12 month period. So I did take that into an account at the end uh, if you want to sell it with the straw just because I think sometimes that balances it out a little bit because you might want to keep the straw, you might want to sell it, and it is a, a bonus that you're going to get from growing that crop. So so we'll keep that in mind, and, and I've calculated that into my final tally of what the best profitable crop is and what the worst is. So the next crop that I harvested was barley. I got 3,268 litres. Again, pretty good, higher than wheat, so it did go up a little bit. In the same size field on 44, I also got 12,503 litres of straw, which is pretty much bang on to where I got the wheat. So it seems like there's no difference in the, the yield of straw compared to wheat and barley. So the third one that I tried out was oats. So I got 1,940 litres from the oats. A little bit less from barley and wheat, but you tend to expect that from the prices. You do get more money from oats uh, on medi medium difficulty. Uh, so you're probably ex gonna expect to get less, which is what I saw. I got 12,500 liters of straw, which is right in line with what I got with wheat and barley. So that is interesting to see that all three give off the same amount of straw. Uh, so there is no difference. There's no benefit from either wheat, barley or oats or straw. They all give off the same amount. So the next one to try, which you've seen me do a lot of times, uh, was canola. Now I didn't have beehives around the canola and I just want to point out I didn't have beehives around the sunflowers or the potatoes on this. I just maximized the yield um, the best I could with fertilizing, rolling, mulching, all that kind of stuff. So I got as many 
uh, bonuses that I could have but I just decided not to do the beehives because I didn't think that a lot of the time it's going to be viable to have so many beehives around a massive field and I, I wanted this to relate to anyone that's trying out on any of their fields that they've got on Farming Simulator 22. So with canola what I got was 1974 litres which is pretty much right in line with what I was getting um, on my how-to videos with the, the yield. So the next one I tried was corn and I did alright with corn, I got 3,132 litres of corn. So after corn I did some sunflowers and the yield turned out to be 1770 which again is a little bit less than what you expect from the wheat and the barley around the same as oats and canola so far out of everything that I've done that was the lowest yield uh, but the price of sunflowers is actually really good. Now the next one after sunflowers was actually quite surprising which was soybeans I actually only got 1532 litres of soybeans so a lot less than what I expected. Uh, quite disappointed really with the soybeans um, again from farming simulator 19 taking soybeans into account I used to get a really good profit from uh, soybeans but it seems like we're going to get less in farming simulator 22 so the yield for the next two really started to increase which is what you'd expect from the root crops so with potatoes I got 13,643 litres a massive jump from what I've been getting with the uh, zero crops um, you can definitely see the difference with doing potatoes and sugar beets. A lot of work goes into them kind of crops, uh, but as you can see, it does pay off. Carrying on with the root crops, sugar beets was next, and again, really impressive, 19,412 litres from that. After sugar beets, I moved on to sorghum, the new crop coming out in Farmer Simulator 22. A modest yield at 2,787 litres. Next up was cotton. Now I don't do cotton much in, in Farming Simulator 19, I really didn't. Um, and it's been the first time I've done it in FS22, so I've not really um, got any reference to compare from the previous game, because like I said, I didn't really try it out much. Uh, but cotton, I got 1,674 litres. Not enough to make a bale, put it that way. Uh, but that's what I got from that field. Again, we're just comparing it in size from field 44 to compare, but only 1,674 litres for cotton. So now I moved on to the new crop types again, um, and the, the vine crops. So I moved on straight to grapes. Really interesting. I actually enjoyed it a lot, uh, harvesting the grapes. Completely different to what I'm used to. Um, you've got to keep in mind the mulching, the cultivating in between, uh, fertilising. It was it was actually pretty fun to do, and actually it turned out pretty well. So with the grapes, I got 3,091 litres. Again, like I said, I'm not 100% certain about uh, how accurate the grapes and olives were. It was pretty difficult to map it out to the exact same size of the field, but I did try and get as close as possible. So I think we should take that one with probably about 90% confidence compared to the others. So olives now, pretty much I am repeating what I said about grapes. Take it with the, about 90% confidence on this, it can vary. Uh, but I did get a good yield again, I got 2,987 litres. And finally I did sugarcane, and I did leave this to last because it's a nightmare. I honestly don't enjoy doing sugarcane, I'll be honest with you now, it is a pain. Um, you can't really use the harvester, you can't, not unless you've got some kind of... Uh, uh, follow me mod or anything because the trailer the harvester doesn't move without a trailer by it so I had to send up set up a uh, worker to do the, the harvesting so I couldn't actually harvest the crop itself and I was just following around with the uh, trailer but it's so sensitive a lot of the time it's stop start anyway the yield I got was 16,942 right so I've just shown you all the yields that I got with each one of these crop types uh, pretty interesting stuff um, some surprises and then obviously some that weren't so surprising uh, kind of some of them were just exactly what you'd expect a little bit disappointed on the uh, soybeans because I do find that's one of my favorite crops in FS19 but with all that information I can now work out and show you uh, what profit I'd get so the way that I worked out the profit I get was I used the best price to sell at 
within the 12 month period and then the amount that I got. And then with that, I could figure out the profit I get, um, like I said, at the best price. So I'll show you the information that I've got now and we'll talk through it. So as you can see, I would have got a profit of £2,862 from wheat, but then again, I could have sold the straw and got 937 And if you look at the prices of barley and oat for the straw, it's all around the same. Um, and, and in all fairness, the crops itself, there isn't too much difference between barley and oats, uh, especially with the straw. So you got 3800 with straw and wheat, £3,810 with barley and its straw, and then again, £3,844 with oats and its straw. So they're, they're pretty much really in line. Now, canola, 3,227, not too bad. Kind of an average yield, uh, an average profit. Corn, not too bad again. You can see that a lot of them are around the 3,000 mark. Uh, but the one that stands out for me is the, is the soybeans. It's, it is lower. It is actually, out of all them crop types, it is the lowest one if you take into account the straw uh, that you can sell with wheat, barley and oats. So out of every crop type there, soybeans is the worst that's the least profit you can get. Um, and I have, in a minute, I'll show you from top to bottom, just so you can see it easier, what, what I found the best crop to be, most profitable crop to be, and also what the least profitable crop to be. So another thing I just want to point out is the new crop types. So let's look at grapes and olives. 5,000, 4,700, not bad at all. That's a, a good profit there. It kind of makes it worthwhile, especially if you've got a big vineyard. I mean, I used a tiny area that really, so that would probably be quite profitable uh, sorghum not too too good not too bad 2999 pound i would have got for selling the sorghum so it is pretty pretty much right and i'd say sorghum's it's low but it's about halfway it's like mid table but the two that stand out for me are potatoes and sugar beets sugar beets is the most profitable crop really does just stand above with the amount of effort that you obviously have to put in to get to get in the equipment and the time it takes it does pay off six thousand five hundred and twenty two pounds for that size field for sugar beets and six thousand for potatoes is really good um, so it seems like the root crops in fs22 are the most profitable crops so with all that being said i'm now showing you from top to bottom what i found to be the most profitable crops in fs22 like i said Soybeans, a bit disappointing at the bottom. Sugar beets and potatoes at the top, which is pretty good. Uh, grapes is right up there at number three. Um, and then you've got like your wheat, your barley, your oats about midway. Uh, probably the most common crop to do because you can get the straw and a lot of people want straw. Then again, if you're keeping the straw, that's going to bring them quite down. And then soybeans wouldn't be at the bottom anymore. If you did keep the straw from the, the crop types, I'd find that wheat is the most least profitable crop, then barley, then oats. Um, and then after that would be soybeans. So soybeans would move up to 11th. So that's all the information I've got. Hopefully you found it useful. Hopefully you found it informative. It did take me a while to get all this. Um, tell me what you think in the comment section. Are you surprised by that? Are you happy by that? Um, if you are, yeah, let me know. So on that note, I'm going to leave the video there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help my channel out. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator.